All right, uh, I'm gonna let you guys do number one. So number two here, the 14th term in the sequence. Uh, so for this one, um, we kind of got to track this sequence here. So I'd say that uh, actually, first of all, I noticed the pattern is plus eight. So it's gonna be an, an arithmetic sequence. So I'm gonna say a sub n equals, um, and I know if the common difference then is eight, uh, it's gonna be eight n. And then if I subtract eight going backwards, my a sub zero would actually be a uh, negative t minus eight. So I'm gonna say minus t minus eight. And then it's asking for the 14th term, so you can just take that and plug in a 14 for n only. All right, next up here, it says the partial sum is given. Find the sum. So I notice that this is arithmetic. I see it's adding 5 over 2 every time. Uh, and you can especially see that if you kind of think this is negative 10 over 2, which you probably should here. And so uh, I know that my sum formula is going to be n over 2 times the first number plus the last number. And I already know those. The problem here is that I don't know n. So I'm gonna have to write uh, a kind of a, an arithmetic formula for this. So I'm gonna say a sub n equals five over two n plus, actually it's gonna be minus there. I know a sub zero is gonna be negative. So I need to subtract five over two going that way. And I'm gonna do that to the negative 10 over two since I already have a common denominator. So it's gonna be negative 15 over two. Uh, so now uh, I'm gonna plug in the 25 into the front and figure out what n that is. So we'll add the 15 over two to that side. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and think of this as 50 over two plus 15 over two. So that's gonna give me 65 over two. And now we will multiply by two over five to get rid of that fraction there. Do a little cross canceling there. And then 65 divided by five uh, is gonna give me uh, 13. So n equals 13. So this will be a 13 over two right there. This is gonna be 20 over one, which makes it easy to cross cancel there. And I get 130. All right, next up here, it says how many three letter words, which is just a string of letters. It doesn't necessarily have to be a word, it can be formed um, using this if the repetitions of letters is not allowed. So a couple ways you can do that. Uh, I would think of this as a permutation since we're rearranging those letters, but we only want to pick three here. Um, or if you wanted to use the line method, since we're doing three letters here, we have four options there, and then three, and then two there. Those would both come out to the same answer. All right, next up here, uh, it says find the number of single show permutations. So the order does matter here. However, it is distinguishable permutations because we have the repeaters. And so anytime we have repeaters, what we wanna do is on the numerator, we're gonna put the factorial of just all of the ones we have. Uh, so that is gonna be eight factorial on top. On bottom, we're gonna put the uh, all the repeaters uh, so I have three Ks, so that's going to be three factorial, and then two Ps, so that's going to be two factorial. Uh, so I'll let you guys calculate that, and that'll give you the answer. All right, next up here, uh, it says the baseball team has nine pitchers and two catchers. How many pitcher-catcher pairs can a manager select? So we're really only making two choices here. We're making a choice for the pitcher and the catcher. We have nine choices there, two for the catcher. So this is kind of just the fundamental counting theorem, so you're just going to multiply those together. All right, uh, next up here, uh, we got some, some information. Uh, and the key here is that this is n years after 2010. And so I'm gonna define the, these amounts up here as a sub zero is 45,000, since that's zero years after 2010. And then a sub one is 48150. Uh, um, and so for, if we're doing arithmetic, I have to find the common difference. Um, so I'm first going to find out what the common difference is, which is we subtract these. Um, and so if I subtract uh, a1 minus a0, um, that is going to come out to 3150. And so I can write a sub n equals 3150. That's positive because it is increasing. n and then plus a sub 0, which I already know is 45,000. Um, now, if it is geometric here, then I need to actually divide these and find r. So I'm going to do a1 over a sub 0. And if I divide those on the calculator, it tells me 1.07. And so I could say a sub n equals uh, a sub 0, which is 45,000, times um, 1.07 to the power of n, since I put the a sub 0 out front. Next up, it says in 2012, she makes that much, so which does it follow? So I would just kind of plug that in to both. Um, and I know I notice that if I plug it into my geometric one, it does give me 51520.5, whereas the arithmetic does not. So that means it is geometric. And then by what percent does she go up? Well, if it's 1.07 is our R, that means that um, 
that actually the raise, the increase is only 7%. Though it's, whenever you're talking about an increase or a decrease, you always have to compare it to one. So it's only 7% more than one. So that would be my answer there. What will be your salary in 2030? Uh, so for that one, you'd have to do uh, in your geometric formula, since that's the correct one, you'd have to do a sub 20 there since it's 20 years after 2010. So I'll let you guys do that. And then lastly here, part F, um, it says how much will she make in total her first five years of teaching? So for this, you're going to have to do a sub 0 plus a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4. Um, I know it seems like you should go to a sub 5, but if you kind of just count these, it is four years, or sorry, it is five years there. So I would just stop right there. And once again, we are using the geometric formula for this since that's the one that we were uh, figured out was correct. All right, next up here, we want to find the common ratio first. So that is any term uh, divided by the term in front of it. So I'm just going to do a sub 2 divided by uh, a sub 1. Um, so I went ahead and, and put the uh, 8 to the power of 1 there because I know that anytime we divide the same base, we actually subtract their exponents, and that gives us the new exponent. So in this case, our r value will be 8 to the power of 2c. Um, for a sub 5, you could kind of just track the pattern here. So I see the a sub 4 would be to the power of 8c plus 1, so this one's going to be 10c plus 1. Um, all right, and then lastly, a sub n here, um, I could say uh, 8 times, uh, and then I have 8 to the power of 2c is my r value, and since I put a1 there, I'm going to put to the power of n minus 1 there. I'll go ahead and leave my answer like that. You could simplify it if you wanted to. All right, next up here it says, how many different combinations of eight students from a class of 31 can be chosen to go on a field trip if Jack is not allowed to go? So we are still choose. so it's a combination. It literally says that, but also the order doesn't matter. Um, and then we're picking eight students here. Um, and we would have 31 in the class, but I'm gonna put 30 there because Jack can't go. So we're taking him out of that, uh, out of the kind of the pool um, of all the students. All right, next up here, uh, well, the sum of the first 25 terms. So I see that this is arithmetic. arithmetic. We got a plus seven pattern there. And so uh, I can use my sum formula of n over two times the first term plus the last term, oh, last term. So I know that the first term is eight. I know that we have 25 numbers, and so I just need to find that last term. So I'm going to write a formula for this. I would say a sub n equals 7n, and then a sub 0 would be 1 there, um, because uh, if you kind of subtract 7 backwards, um, that's what's got to go there in order to make it work. Um, so now uh, what you're going to need to do is you're going to find need to find a sub 25, since that's going to be the last term, and just plug it in right there. I'll let you guys do that. All right, next up here, uh, it says the Senate subcommittee is nine Democrats and eight Republicans. How many combinations of chair, vice chair, and secretary are possible if chair must be a Democrat and the vice chair must be a Republican? So uh, I can't just do like 17P3 here, even though the order does matter. Because they're breaking this up in the categories, I'm just going to use the fundamental counting theorem. So we have the chair here, and we know that must be a Democrat, so we have nine options. And then the vice chair must be a Republican, so we have eight options. And then the uh, secretary, um, well, that could be anybody, but I've already, so I, I, I know the total here is 17, but I'm actually going to put 15 there because we've already chosen two people for the first two jobs. All right, uh, 12 and 13, I'm going to let you guys try those on your own. Uh, 14, though, uh, on this one, it says the 12th term is 15, so, and the 6th term is 9. So whenever I have this, I kind of always think of these as points, and then I'm going to want to find the slope here. Since it is arithmetic, that's really, like, linear. So I'm going to do 9 minus 15 over uh, 6 minus 12. So that's negative uh, 6 over negative 6. So that's 1. Uh, so that's my common difference. So I know a sub n equals 1n plus whatever a sub 0 is. To find a sub 0, I would just kind of pick one of these points, whichever is easier, and plug it in there. So then I'm going to subtract the 6 over. So a sub 0 is 3. So I know a sub n then is 1n plus 3. And now I would just plug in 20. So 23. All right, number 15 here uh, is an infinite sum. I'll let you guys just use the infinite sum formula there. 16, though, it says nine workers are cleaning the house. Uh, six need to clean the windows, two the carpets, and one the rest of the house. How many different ways can these tasks be assigned? So this is uh, order matters um, because it does matter how you get picked as to what job you have. But we do have some repeaters here. So uh, this is what we call a distinguishable uh, permutation, and so whenever we have this, 
we're gonna put the total with a factorial on top, so that's nine. And then we're gonna put those repeaters on bottom as factorials, so we have six factorial and two factorial. Um, technically, you could put one factorial on the bottom, but that's just one, it's really not gonna change anything, so I only put the repeaters down there. All right, next up here, once again, uh, permutations, and so the order matters here. However, we do have with repeaters, so we need to take, it's much like the last problem, we need to take that into account. So I have eight in total, but I have four O's. Uh, do I have any other repeating letters? No, I don't, so that's gonna be our setup there. All right, next up here, we wanna write this in sigma notation. So I'm gonna write my sigma. Um, I'm first gonna come up with a formula here. I'm gonna call this A1. You can actually do this differently by calling that something else, but I'm gonna call it A1. And so um, I see that this is a plus four pattern. So I'm gonna say A sub n equals four n. And then I'm gonna go plus eight there for my A sub zero. And so that's gonna go here, four n plus eight. So I'm gonna start at the first term. Um, and then uh, my last one here, um, you could actually just count these. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight terms. Also, you could double check that by plugging in that top number. This is gonna be 32 plus eight, which does give me that 40, which checks out because that's the last term. How many different um, combinations are possible in choosing a president, vice president, secretary from a class of 23 males and 25 males, or 23, okay. If the president must be female and the vice president must be male. Okay, so we're gonna do the president, the vice president, and the secretary. Uh, once again here, order does matter on this picking, but since they kind of mixed up the categories here and they're putting these stipulations on, I'm just gonna use the uh, fundamental counting theorem. So for president here, since that must be female, that's gonna be 23 options. Vice president male is gonna be 25 options. And secretary could be anybody. Uh, so our total was uh, 48, but we're gonna take out the two that we chose for the first one, first two, and so that's gonna be 46 options for that. So we can just multiply that all together. All right, next up here, uh, we have 24 players and then they do our breakdown. So once again, here we have some categories. So we're gonna have to really separate this out. Uh, we need three forwards, and so we have 14 to choose from. Uh, it sounds like the order doesn't matter here, and they do use the word combination, so I'm gonna say that's gonna be 14C3. And so then I need to do, that's for my forwards, so I need to do the same thing for defense and goalie, um, but there's gonna be combinations, and then we're gonna multiply them together. All right, uh, next up here, uh, this is a sum. It is arithmetic. I know it's because it's mx plus b anyway. Um, so I'm going to use my sum formula, which is n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. It's really the first number plus the last number. And actually on this one, since it's starting at 0, our a sub 1 is actually not a sub 1. It's actually a sub 0 because that's the first number we want to add up. So that's 1 minus 7 times 0. So that's going to be uh, 1. And then this is going to be a sub 20. So a sub 20, you got to figure that out. I'll let you guys do that and put that there. Another tough part on this one is n. So n is uh, whenever you're not starting at, at zero, I always do top minus bottom plus one. So it's actually 21 here, not 20. You can think about it, if we did start at one, it would be 20 numbers, but since we're starting at zero, there's one extra number. All right, next up here, uh, it says, uh, which of the following formulas describe the sequence? So I see that it is a plus eight pattern. So then I'm, I'm thinking, uh, well, first of all, um, I see that this is the correct recursive, saying a sub n equals the previous term plus 8, whereas this one is saying it's multiplying by 8, which is incorrect. Um, but when I'm writing my explicit formula, then I'm going to do it as linear. So I'm going to say uh, 8n as my common difference, and then um, my a sub 0 would be negative 6. So that's looking like this one. Uh, I know that b is wrong. Uh, and I know that f is wrong since that's exponential. I'm not really sure about c though, so what I would do on c is just kind of check it here. I would say, I would distribute 8n minus 8 um, plus 2, and which does simplify to 8n minus 6. So I'm gonna say that option c is also correct because when I simplify it, it actually comes out to the same thing. All right, next up here, it says how many different three card hands can be selected from a deck of 52 cards? So for hands like this, because you can always rearrange your hand once you get it, I'm gonna say that this is a combination, so it's just gonna be 52c3. All right, next up here, we want the common difference. I would just make all of these have the same denominator. So I'm gonna multiply this and this one by three. So it's gonna be three over six, comma, one over six, comma, negative one over six, comma, negative three over six. So then I see, think it's really easy to see that the common difference is down two, and then with that common denominator, six, so negative one third. 
All right, I'll let you guys try 25 and 26, but 27 here. How many ways can two pizza toppings be chosen from 10 available toppings? So that's gonna be a combination because I don't care what order they put the pizza toppings on, so it'll be 10C2. All right, next up here, we need to write a recursive rule for this. So I'm just gonna track the pattern. I see it's consistently plus seven. I'm just gonna say a sub n equals a sub n minus one, the previous term, plus seven. For the recursive though, I do need to list a sub one. And uh, last up here, uh, this one is uh, infinite sum. So we're gonna use our formula a sub, or actually a one times, no, it's a one over one minus r. So I'm gonna track r here, r is four over one. Uh, so that's four. And actually that means that this is no sum. Um, anytime r is not between negative one and one, it is no sum. You can see the reason why that is, is these numbers are getting a lot bigger as they go along. We can only track those infinite sums when the numbers are getting smaller.